already downloaded. Okay. Um, I wanted to show you a couple things. Hold on, let me switch my screen here for a second. Okay, when you log into sagemember.com, this is the area that you logged mm -hmm. into to download the Supplier Center. Underneath Support and Videos, this is an area that kind of everything that I'm going to cover today is kind of broke out into little small videos. Um, so like if you needed to know more information about shipping or product updates, these are like less than four minute little videos. I am also recording today's training, so I will send that over to you um, once we finish the call today. But this is a good resource for you. Okay. So once you log into the Sage Supplier Center, this is the screen that you will have. Um, I'm gonna click on Supplier Profile and Catalog. Everything that's in this area is what the distributor will see when they're searching in Sage. So you wanna make sure that you provide as much information as you possibly can. Um, for example, um, you probably should put your business hours in right here. In order to make any changes on most of the tabs, you do have to hit the edit button first at the bottom. So that makes the fields live where you can type into those fields. And then once you're finished, you hit the save button at the bottom. And whatever change you made, that goes live right away. There's not a delay or a pending or anything like that. On the contacts tab, the only thing the distributor does not see on this page is they do not see the marketing contact. That is a contact that we use here um, at Sage to send out your newsletters, your statistical reports, advertising opportunities, and things like that. And then down here at the bottom is the Sage order management area. When distributors are searching in Sage and they locate, um, you know, a product or a supplier that they're interested in, they can actually send over different types of requests to you guys. So they can create purchase orders, requests for quotes. So you want to make sure that you put in the email address here that you want those requests to go to. Okay. Now on the policies tab over here on the right hand side, this is where you can indicate if you guys charge for samples um, or maybe you have, um, you know, you require the distributor to provide um, a tracking or a shipping number, and pay for shipping in order for those samples. So that's where this box comes into play. So you can put in all those little details um, regarding requesting samples. Now, do you guys actually have a catalog? Do you have a catalog? Oh, it's okay, okay now. Do you have a catalog? So if somebody requests a catalog, do you have a catalog to send? Yeah, yes. we have a catalog. Okay. Then right here, you can enter in what shipping carriers that you use. So we have the different carriers listed here. This box that says shipping estimator notes. Um, we have a built-in shipping estimator for the distributors. This is where you can put in any additional notes. Let's say, for example, um, you charge handling fees or um, you have a flat rate shipping that you charge. You can enter that information in here. The artwork tab, this is where you can provide ad additional information to the distributors on how they need to provide the artwork over to you guys. So, um, you know, what formats, platforms, softwares. You can also indicate how you do your art proof types. And then down here at the bottom is for any additional information, such as a PMS color charge, copy changes, et cetera. Um, because we have over a million products in our database, for you as the supplier, it's important to make sure that you fill in as many fields as you possibly can to help that visibility on your products. 
I'm going to skip the catalog tab because I'm actually going to do that last. It takes a little bit more time on that one. So I'm going to jump over to specials. This is the great area for you as a supplier. It allows you to list any specials that you might run throughout the year. And when you list your specials in this area, it actually tags your product. So the distributor can filter their searches based on specials. So I'm gonna hit the add new special button and it's gonna open up a little screen for me. So I basically just fill this information in. I put in a title and the title of your special doesn't have to be anything fancy. It can be something as simple as, you know, third quarter special or back to school special. Then you can select the type of special that you're, you are offering. So you have um, product pricing, setup charges, closeouts, uh, freight, free goods. And then over here is where you put in your expiration date. And because our system is a live system, once your special expires, it will automatically go inactive. So you guys don't have to come back in here and remove the special, it'll actually do that for you. Then you can select, once your products are listed in the system, which we'll go over last, um, they'll be in this drop-down menu. So you can select the product that you're going to list on special. And if you're doing a pricing special, it'll pull the regular price in for you. And then you simply put in your special pricing. And then down here is for any additional notes. So if you have a promo code that you want them to refer to, or maybe the product comes in, you know, several different colors, and you're only offering a special on one color, you can put that in there. And the nice thing about this area, there's no limit. You can list as many specials as you like and as many types of specials as you like. Do you guys have any questions on that? Okay, the next tab over is the shows and the reps. So this top section is where you can let distributors know what trade shows you guys will be exhibiting at. And we do list all of the industry related shows, um, including like regional shows and things like that. And you can actually see that there's a big list of shows here. And down here at the bottom is where you can list multi-line reps if you guys use multi-line reps. The next tab over is your sales tools. This is a really good kind of open marketing area. You can upload videos in this area. You can put in um, URL links like YouTube links. You can also upload um, all kinds of documents, you know, articles, testimonials, press releases, anything that you guys feel would help a distributor understand your company, understand your products, you know, understand your, your processes. And it's kind of like the specials. You just hit add new file. And it gives you a tool to fill in. And then right here is where you can select if it's a file or a URL. And just like the specials, there's no limit. You can list as many items in this area as you want. The next tab over is your ratings. Ratings are really important to distributors. So it's important for you as a company to encourage your customers to rate you guys. They can rate you in two different areas. There's an overall rating, um, which is A plus to F, and that's their overall experience with you. Then they can rate you in these three different categories, and it's a one to five star rating. In addition, they can post comments with the ratings, and as a supplier, you can respond to the ratings. I highly encourage responding to all ratings, regardless if they're positive or negative, because that helps you build rapport with the distributors, um, because it actually shows the distributors that you guys are paying attention, that you're looking to see what's being said. Now, with regards to the ratings, we do have um, information that I'm going to send over to you after this call that will kind of help you encourage your customers to rate you. We have um, what we call a Rate Us Now logo that you can add to your email signatures. 
And that's a live link. So your customer can click on it and rate you guys directly. And that's a good way to help encourage your customers to rate you. The last tab is your statistics tab. Um, every month you'll receive a monthly statistical report and that will be sent over to whoever you have listed as a marketing contact. But you can also see that information here underneath the statistics tab. Over here on the right hand side or left hand side is kind of overview information. It shows month to date, last month, year to date, and last year. Supplier info views, that means the distributors actually clicked in to view your contact information. So they wanted to see your address, your phone number, your website. Product detail views, that means the distributors actually clicked into a product to view image, description, and pricing of your product. And then orders received, that would be any of those documents that are sent to you through Sage. So if they send over a purchase order or request for quote, that's what those numbers represent. And then every month you'll get a list of your top 10 most viewed products. And it'll also tell you how many views each one of those items have. So now we're gonna go back to the catalog tab. Um, obviously this is the main point of this whole um, area is so that you can list your products in. So up here, you'll notice that the dates show 1990. That just indicates that you don't have any products yet listed into Sage. So the first thing I'm going to do is click on number two, set catalog year. And you'll see the catalog year is 2023. I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at those dates and hit okay. You'll see the new catalog year changed to 2023. The current catalog has not changed yet. That will change once you start adding your products in. Now you guys indicated that you do have a catalog, so you have the ability to upload your catalog down here in the lower left corner. And that just gives the distributors access to your catalog as well. I'm gonna click on this very bottom button that says general information. This is a really important area because this is where you can provide additional information. So if you have additional artwork information on how they should submit that to you guys, you can enter that there. You can enter in what your cancellation policy is, less than minimums, imprint colors, overruns, payment terms. These are open fields, so you just hit edit at the bottom and then just type in your information. Again, the more information that you provide up front, the better it's going to be for your visibility. There's this area right here that's called product defaults. I'm gonna click into there. This is where you can provide information that may be the same for the majority of your products. So if the imprint method is the same, the price includes setup charges, you can enter that information in here. And then when you go to add your products, it will automatically populate that information. So now I'm gonna click on edit products. So you don't have any products listed. So the first thing you'll do is click on add product here. Now there's a couple of ways to enter your products in. Um, I'm gonna show you both ways. This way is manually one product at a time. We also have a spreadsheet that you can use to add your products, but I always recommend at least entering in two products manually first before you use the spreadsheet because the spreadsheet is really large. And if you already have information in there, it'll help you follow that spreadsheet a lot easier. So up here is where you select the category, and I saw on your website that you guys have mugs, so I'm going to put mugs in there. You can also select a second category if it applies to the product. Mugs is just a mug. It's not going to fall into any other category. Um, but if you have, let's say, a keychain that has a flashlight on it, it can go in the keychain category and the flashlight category. 
but 90% of products only fall into one category. Here's where you list your item number or your SKU number, and then you put in your product name. Right here is where you enter in the page number that that item is on in your catalog. And then over here where the um, boxes and the plus signs are, this is where you upload your images of your product. You have the ability to upload up to 99 images per product. So if that product comes in a lot of different color choices, you want to upload a blank image of that product in every color it's available in. Right here, you've got six tabs that go across. The very first area is your description. And this should be end user safe. So you do not want to include any pricing, uh, contact information. You don't want to put in any, um, you know, includes or free statements. So for example, you don't want to enter in something that might say um, include shipping or uh, free setup charges. You don't want to enter any pricing kind of information. Then you have your keywords. Keywords are those physical descriptive words. What shape is the product? What material is it made out of? What special features does it have? You do not want to duplicate words and you don't have to list both the singular and the plural form. Now, the nice thing about our supplier center is we've got built-in help windows. So if I click on this word keywords, it's gonna open up a link for me and it's gonna give me all the information on how to do keywords. So keep the keywords short and simple, capitalize the first letter of every word, do not abbreviate, um, do not use opinions, so you don't want to say best on the market, pretty, things like that. Um, and you don't need to put the category as keyword. So if it is in the mugs category, you don't have to put mugs in as a keyword. And you don't want to use trademark names um, as keywords. It also lets you know what the maximum character limit is of each field. Then you have where you list your product colors. Um, so if it comes in five colors, let's say it comes in blue, green, yellow. So you list them, you separate by commas and you capitalize the first letter. Let's say your product is two-tone. It's white with red trim. You would put white slash red as the color. You don't want to use phrases like all colors, every color, as shown. You want to list the actual colors that the product is available in. Then you have your themes, and themes are kind of like events or usages. You can do up to five, but, but not every product will have five. So you don't, just because you can do five, you don't want to force it into five. So if I'm looking at entering in a coffee mug, I might go down here and say, um, beverage, I think I have drinking, I could do household, um, I could do restaurant if it's a coffee mug. So those would be my, my themes that I would do for this particular product. You wanna make sure that those themes are appropriate to the product. Then over here is where you list where the product is made, assembled, and decorated in. And this is important for you to fill this in and make sure that it's accurate. Then you can list the dimensions of the product. You have your imprint method. You can also put in the dimensions of your imprint area. And over here is where you can indicate where that is. You know, is it on the front? Is it on the back? Is it wrap around? Is it on the top? You list your packaging. Is it bulk packaged? Is it individually boxed or individually polybagged? You have your production time. You can also list a rush production time if it's offered. And then down here at the bottom where it has um, units per carton, weight per carton, and carton dimensions, this is what works with the shipping estimator.
The next tab over is your pricing. So as you can see, you can do up to six columns worth of pricing. So you list your quantity breaks. Then you list your catalog price, which is also known as the coded pricing. And then you put your price codes over here off to the far right. Pieces per unit is normally one, unless you're selling a box of golf balls or things like that. Then, it, you know, if you're selling a box of golf balls, your pieces per unit would be 12. Then you have what your price includes. Is it one color, one side, one location, full wrap? This section right here for options, this would be any um, options or additional charges that might apply to your product. So let's say for this mug, you also offer a gift box option. That would be considered packaging. And so you could put a gift box. And then you'd put in what the additional charge is for that gift box. Down here at the bottom is for any setup charges and additional run charges. And you'll see there's two boxes here. So this first box is for the price. The second box is for the price code. The next tab over is your compliance tab. Um, as you see, we have a lot of compliances listed on here. The most popular one currently that distributors are looking for is the Prop 65. So if your product is compliant with Prop 65, you want to make sure that you indicate that. If your product requires a warning label for Prop 65, we have those warning labels listed right here. The Others tab, this is where you can mark items if they're environmentally friendly, recyclable, um, if it's a food item, if it's a clothing item, if it's hazardous, not suitable for all audiences. This is kind of a weird tag. If you sell items like ashtrays, they have to be marked as not suitable for all audiences. Um, and that's the reason why is because technically you're not supposed to smoke until you're 21. Um, and so it's not suitable for anyone under 21. So that's why that's marked. And then right here is where you can list um, social good programs. So if you donate a portion of your proceeds to a nonprofit organization, um, you can actually indicate that here. I'm sorry, it's like my chat is, let me move my chat over. It's kind of going crazy today. We also have where you can list your inventory levels. Most of my suppliers that do inventory um, actually do it with an API data feed. They don't manually update their inventory. And then the statistics tab, this will show you the last time the product was actually updated. So once you fill everything in and you hit that save and verify button at the bottom, a couple of things will happen. The product will go live immediately so distributors are able to find it. This will automatically populate to let you know that it was updated the day you did that. Um, now, just because the product goes live, that doesn't mean you can't come back in and make changes. You have 24 seven access to your product data. So you can come in here and make any changes that you want to anytime. Now I mentioned another way that you could actually update your products with a spreadsheet. So let me go back to the catalog tab here. So under bulk update, I'm gonna click on that. You'll see this page right here with three steps. Step one, you're gonna download your current product list. This is why I recommend adding at least two products in manually before you download this list. Step number two is um, the link to the instructions for the um, spreadsheet. And then step three is when you would upload that spreadsheet back into the system. The spreadsheet starts processing immediately um, in Sage, so there's not a delay or anything. It starts processing and adding those products immediately. So I'm gonna click on step number one, and it's gonna ask me to save the document. I'm just gonna put it on my desktop for now. And then it'll ask me if I wanna open it.
and it's hiding somewhere. There we go. <clears throat> so it starts at column A and it goes all the way over to column DT. So it's a very large spreadsheet. Um, if you had products in already, they would populate this information and it would actually make it a lot easier to enter additional products. So once you've added your product information on this spreadsheet, you just save and close it and you're going to re-upload it right down here under step number three. Now what I want to do is I want to switch over to Sage Online, which is one of our tools that the distributor uses, because I want to show you what the product would look like to the distributor once you've entered it into the system. So it would show all of the uh, information, like contact information. Here's all the contact details. This particular supplier has been in our system, so they've, they've got ratings. Um, their ratings are kind of all over the place right now. But you also, like I said, you want to make sure that you respond to the ratings. Um, your response would show up right here on the ratings. Your general information, this is all of those details that we showed earlier where it shows what your cancellation policy is, your less than minimums, overruns, payment terms, all of those details. Artwork, so this is um, how you let the distributors know how you accept electronic artwork, what your imprint colors are, copy changes, imprint methods, etc. If you have a catalog, it would be indexed here and they're able to actually view each page of your catalog. They can go, you know, from page to page and they can also download the catalog as a full PDF if they want to. This particular supplier has a bunch of specials listed. It looks like they have 110 specials. So this is what the specials will look like. Like this one's a pricing special. So it shows what the regular price is and then they entered in what the special pricing is. And it looks like their special pricing starts at a different quantity. So now I'm going to pull up the products and I'm just going to click into this water bottle right here. So this particular item comes in a lot of different colors. So you can see that they've uploaded an image of every color. The reason you want to do that is because the distributors can actually create virtual samples. So I can click on this little coffee mug right here. I can come in here and pick what color I want. I can put my customer's logo on it and send that over to my customer. So that's why those um, blank images are really important. So here's the description of the product. Here's the pricing. So based on the catalog price and those pricing codes, it shows the distributor what the net cost is and what their profit is on this particular item. We have all the colors that the product is available in. We have themes. It shows all the imprint information. It looks like this one has two options for imprinting, screen print or digital. And here's where they have all those extra pricing listed out there. And then here's the keywords that are listed for that particular product. So all that work that you do on the back end, this is what it's going to look like on the front end. And if I were to create a purchase order to send over to the supplier, down here where I click on order forms, I would select purchase order. It's going to ask me how many. I'm just going to put in 50 for, for the demonstration. On the purchase order, the distributors can also upload the images of the artwork that they want so that you guys can go out and grab that. And this is basically what it'll look like when it comes over to you. The distributors may put like their own logo over here um, 
but it'll be laid out just like this. It'll say purchase order. It'll have all the information that um, is important to the order. It'll show how many are being ordered. And if there's artwork attached, it would be attached down here on the bottom. It's actually a link that'll come over to you guys. Do you have any questions? I know that's a lot of information we just went over. If you enter in a couple of products and you want me to review them for you, just to let you know if you're missing any information, please feel free to reach out and let me know. Um, I will send over information on the ratings to you guys after we get off the call as well as I'm recording this session. So I will send over the link to this recording for you so you have it. And if you have any questions as you're entering in your products or you want me to look at anything, please feel free to reach out. That's what we're here for, is to help you guys maximize the system and get the best visibility as you possibly can. Anything else you need? Mm, we need to try try to upload the product on our side so we will know how to do it. Uh, yeah. Um, like I said, if you just enter in like two products and then shoot me an email, I can review them for you mm -hmm. and make sure that you're not missing any important information. Okay. Thank you. You're so welcome. Well, I will get this information right over to you and just feel free to reach out with any questions that you might have. Okay. All right. Well, you guys have a good day. Okay. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.